Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's lecture focuses on inkjet 3D printing or more commonly called as material jetting. This is a printing method where the part material is dispensed directly from a print head. That is, a print head directly ejects out the part material in the form of a liquid. Now, there are two most common methods for droplet expulsion. That is continuous mode or drop on demand mode. Continuous mode is also commonly called as continuous inkjet or continuous stream. In this, the liquid is expelled in the form of a continuous column, whereas in drop on demand mode, the liquid is expelled in the form of discrete droplets. So let us look at the schematics of both continuous method and drop on demand methods. So for the continuous methods, there is an actuator. that actuates the pressure signal. There is a drive signal that basically tells the actuator when to initiate the actuation mechanism, fluid supply, charging electrodes, high voltage deflection plates, droplet catchers and the substrate. So a steady pressure is applied to this fluid chamber causing the pressurized fluid to be ejected from the nozzle. So from here the fluid is ejected. In the form of droplets. As soon as it ejects from the nozzle this breaks into small droplets like these. After a continuous length suppose this is the continuous length. After that, it breaks into smaller droplets due to a phenomena called as Rayleigh instability. This breakup can be made more consistent by vibrating or perturb perturbing or modulating the jet at a fixed frequency that might be close to the droplet formation rate. So this frequency of disturbance should be equivalent to the droplet formation rate to have a more uniform droplet deposition on the substrate or a more continuous form. In such a manner, these droplets are of uniform mass. Now since these are produced at constant intervals, their deposition must be controlled after they separate out from this jet. Now to achieve this, they are passed through charging electrodes. These charging electrodes in, induce certain charge on these droplets. Hence they at, attain some electrostatic charges. So these droplets after passing through these charging electrodes have some electrostatic charges. Now they are made to pass through the deflection plates. Now these deflection plates deflect these droplets in the desired direction either on the substrate or on this droplet catcher. So when these droplets pass through this, so either they are deflected towards this droplet catcher or on the substrate, depending upon the CAD file or the location where we need to deposit the material on the substrate. So droplets going to the droplet catcher are either recycled or disposed of. They are either recycled or disposed of.
now one of the major advantage of continuous method is high throughput rate that is high throughput rate okay like larger batch processing can be made and the droplet size are approximately in the range of 150 microns and are dropped at a frequency of 8200 kilohertz and this continuous method finds major application in food and pharmaceutical labelings applications lies in food and pharmaceutical labelings Our next method is drop on demand mode. So in this, instead of a continuous column, individual droplets are expelled directly from the nozzle. okay so what happens is droplets are formed only when there are pressure pulses in the nozzle that cause the fluid to be expelled so this is the fluid supply or fluid chamber and this actuator applies a pressure and when there is a pressure it actuates the fluid within this chamber to expel out in the form of droplets so whenever there is a signal the droplets will form so you can have the droplets uh, pulse train like this so there is a pulse here then again here then no pulse then again a pulse here 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 and then here so like this, this is the pulse stream for drop on demand method. So here there is no continuous column of fluid like in the previous case and there is no relay instability here. Now these pressure pulses can be produced using different actuating mechanisms. There are thermal actuators, electrostatic actuators. piezoelectric actuators, acoustic actuators and many other. Currently thermal and piezoelectric actuators dominate the industry. Thermal and piezoelectric they are the dominant actuating mechanism that are there these days. Now in this method the droplets are of size approximately droplet size is approximately 25 to 120 micrometer and they are deposited at frequencies of 0 to 2000 hertz okay then the, the two actuating mechanisms thermal and piezoelectric so for thermal actuator they re rely on a resistor to heat the liquid okay so let us see so this is your fluid chamber this is your orifice and suppose this is the heater this is heater this is the orifice and here is your ink now what is happening is 
this heater is heating up this fluid okay this heater heats the fluid within the reservoir until a bubble in here expands this air bubble expands now when this air bubble expands it forces out a droplet of fluid like this droplet is forced out now when the, and as it goes on expanding this droplet ultimately ejects out from this orifice this is the bubble this has expanded and now the droplet is ejected this is the final droplet so this relies on heating the fluid to expand a bubble within the fluid chamber and force the droplet out of the fluid chamber now next is piezoelectric actuation of drop on demand technique so piezo electric actuators they rely upon the deformation of a piezo electric element to reduce the volume of the liquid reservoir and this reduction in volume this reduction in volume forces a droplet out of the nozzle let us see at the schematic so you have this fluid chamber this is the orifice and this is your piezo ceramic or piezo electric element now this is your ink and this is your orifice similar to the previous case now this piezo electric element will deform when voltage is supplied to it and suppose it takes this curved shape so this has caused a reduction in volume that this reservoir can hold for the ink as a result a droplet will be forced out from here this is initiation of droplet and as this deformation continues suppose this high or even more we can say like this much this piece of ceramic has deformed then finally a complete droplet is ejected these are the two main actuating mechanisms for drop on demand technique sorry for uh, inkjet 3d printing now let us look at the technical challenges that are involved in inkjet 3d printing first and foremost is the formulation of the liquid material since this method relies on the liquid material and its expulsion as a droplet so formulation of a suitable liquid material with suitable biological properties is very important 
so what we can have is we can have a suspension of particles in a carrier liquid or if the material is solvable then we can dissolve that material in a suitable solvent or that liquid can be formed out of melting a solid polymer okay so these are the challenges for formulation of liquid material now next is droplet formulation that droplet needs to be formed and it should be stable so in inkjet methods the material must be converted from a continuous volume of liquid into a small discrete droplets from continuous liquid to small discrete droplets okay and any changes in the properties of the liquid ink affects the droplet formulation see as i told rheological properties are very important okay and this droplet formulation formation also depends on the material that is being printed the hardware that is involved like what are the actuating mechanisms and etc and the process parameters like how much actuating pressure we are using how deformation how much deformation of the piezoelectric material is being used etc next is the control of the deposition of the droplets when once we have formed the droplets these droplets need to be deposited at certain specific points on the substrate if they are not deposited at specific points or the desired locations then whole exercise is a waste so this deposition is affected by the droplet flight path like when that is the path that is being covered by the droplet after being ejected out from the nozzle but before being deposited on the substrate after it is ejected from the nozzle but before it is deposited on the substrate now droplet next is droplet impact what how forcefully that droplet is forming on the substrate next is substrate wetting by the droplet or how the droplet interacts with the substrate if they wet each other or not or if it is repulsive to the substrate if the droplet material is repulsive to the substrate it won't stick to the substrate and it will form a spherical bead repel, uh, repelling itself from the substrate next is the droplet size and droplet velocity okay all these affect the deposition characteristics so there are these deposition of droplets there are two main defects or instabilities that are formed one is satellite defect satellite defect happens when the droplet when there is a bigger droplet and certain small droplets break off from the bigger one so what it does is there is a bigger droplet surrounded by a number of smaller droplets so this creates a lot of surface roughness and inaccuracy in printing and print over a area over an area larger than the desired area
okay another is crown formation so this is if the impact is too high and the droplet velocity is also high impact is large or in other words droplet velocity is high then as the droplet hits the substrate because of the impact it rebounds and creates crown and solidifies and creates a defect called as crown this leads to high surface roughness hence droplet velocities and impact need to be strictly controlled okay let us look at the advantages and some disadvantages of this inkjet printing so let us first go through the advantages so advantages are that this is a very low cost method and really simple to operate there are no complexities involved with the process since the material is directly ejected out from a print head it does not involve any kind of toxic lasers or materials and it doesn't require because of the absence of laser or any other thing power requirements are really low using this method multiple materials can be printed and it has the capability of printing colors that is functionally graded materials if we use multiple nozzles at the same time then high speeds can be achieved and last the scalability of the process with advantages there come certain disadvantages as well so let us not overlook them and go through them once so we have a limited material palette and for inkjet printing only waxes and photopolymers are still commercially available only wax or photopolymers are commercially available
for all rest of the materials we have to do our own R&D. The surface finish is poor. Okay. Now what kind of materials can we print using this technique? Materials. that can be printed using inkjet 3d printing technique okay first is polymers Polymers can be melted to form the liquid or there can be UV curable photoresin, polymeric resins, UV curable polymeric resins, liquid polymers that is in the melted form. etc. Okay, also waxy polymers. Next are ceramics. Ceramics are not available in liquid form directly. Instead, they are used in the form of suspensions. Okay. So recently suspensions of alumina have been printed using wax as the carrier fluid. For alumina suspension. And in that up to 40% of solid loading. have been done. Higher, what happens is as we go towards higher loadings, the viscosity of the suspension increases. Higher solid loading increases the viscosity of the suspension. Okay, so this creates disturbance in droplet formation. Droplet formation is not good at higher viscosities. Okay, since these parts will have only partial ceramics and rest must be this carrier material, they need to be centered and the carrier material or the binder should be burnt off. The third is, third and the last are the metals that can be used for inkjet 3D printing and the most common metal that is worked upon is solder. The major challenge is for using metals in inkjet 3D printing are high melting temperatures associated with all the metals. So such high temperatures can significantly damage the printing parts or the printing machine. Okay, so but recently aluminium has been deposited using inkjet 3D printing. So this was all about inkjet 3D printing. Hope you all understood what is inkjet 3D printing, its various methods of droplet form formation, 
its advantages and disadvantages and the materials that can be used. Thank you.